Welcome to episode seven of the Manny Matt Sackis Show, where we give you insight on how to win on the field and optimize your life. Today, I have a special guest with me, and um, she is Sarah Gigantino Hogan. Uh, last week, uh, we spoke to her father, longtime uh, legendary defensive coordinator, Greg Gigantino. And um, right now, I've decided that uh, it's time for everybody to be introduced to the first female that I am interviewing on the show. And uh, Sarah has lived football throughout her life. And uh, she currently is the coordinator of head coach operations for the Atlanta Falcons. She's go- heading into her fifth, sixth year coming up. Uh, with the Falcons. She joined the organization as a coordinator of scouting administration back in May of 2015 and moved into her current role working for Dan Quinn in January of 2016. Enjoy this episode. Uh, Sarah's fantastic. I think uh, it'll be a lot of fun to hear her talk about aspects of football that as a coach, it's important to understand that administrative side. Welcome, Sarah. How's it going? Going great. Thank All you so much. Right. How are you? So uh, the high-pressure profession of the National Football League. Wow. How do you like that? It is quite interesting, especially when you're on a um, very – when you have a very long season, when you start off um, rocky, and then yeah. we had to pick it up midway through the year. And um, it's definitely been a journey, and you know, our first year there, we were eight and eight, and then the next year we were in the Super Bowl. So, um, it, from there, we've learned a lot and yeah. know where we're going, and it's been it's been great. Well, you finished strong. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know that that's that's amazing, and we'll, we'll get to everything with the Atlanta Falcons and you know your role and how you've gotten there. But um, you know, I just want to go back a ways when um, you know you um, you know uh, Sarah Hogan is. Um, by her maiden name, Gigantino. That's right. Right. Now my middle name. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Can't get rid of that one. Uh huh. Yeah, it comes from a tremendous uh, football family. You know, your your dad, uh, in my estimation, is one of the top defensive coordinators in the country over the year. Just a, just has been fantastic at Hofstra, and he had a really good run at Bryant, and uh, you know helped build that program yep. into um, top. Uh, FCS level program. He's Absolutely. coached a lot of great players. And, uh, you know, he and I coached together for three years, and uh, you were tiny <laughs> at that point. Yeah, I think I was 10. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. It is unbelievable. And we go back that far. It's yeah. incredible that it, I'm actually sitting here doing this yeah, with you right now. It's pretty neat. It's great. Yeah. So, you know, you, you go back to that, and then your uncle Artie. Yep. Right? You know, another NFL coach. Big you know, name in the business. Everyone yeah. automatically assumes that he's my dad. Yeah. People will be like, oh, is, is Artie your father? Like, they recognize Gigantino. And Isn't that's, that crazy? Yeah, they go to one of two guys. And yeah. So, especially people on the West Coast. Sure. Yeah. And I can see that. And, you know, when you grow up in football, and I think um, what our listeners and people watching this are, it was sort of, the other day we're sitting there talking and, um, you know, and I'm, I'm telling Sarah about my daughter, you know, who uh, works in New York City in the fashion industry. Yeah. And she uh, works for Diane von Furstenberg, who I don't know. Who, and, and Sarah goes, I don't know who that is. <laughs> if it's not football, I don't care. It's you true. know? Yeah. yeah. So, so she is totally into the game. And because you grew up in the game. That's right. You know, you've been around some great football coaches. That's right. Um, you know, just because of your father, really, initially, and that's, that's how it all got going. That's right. You know, and we're all you're, you know, we're all very fortunate from the experiences we have. But at some point, you know, that connection, you ended up doing some amazing things on your own. You know, I mean, I mean, you got in right exactly because of you Foot know in the your, door your and father. Then took it to the yeah. yeah, and you had to you had to go from there, right? So, you know, you uh, graduated from uh, James Madison. That's right. Right. Yep, I remember that. And um, you know, you got into um, the football administrative type deal with the New York Jets. Yeah. Well, right? the first right off the bat when I went to school, my dad's like, 
I don't care what you're doing while you're at JMU, you're going to volunteer in the football office. Like it, yeah. that was not an option. So okay. I just, it was second nature for me to just go in there and help the coaches and the, um, you know, the secretaries. And I loved it. I went in there yeah. every, almost every day for four years. And <laughs> I, at that time I had no clue. I even wanted to work in football. I just did it because that's what, yeah. you know, you I, felt most comfortable. Yeah. There. I felt with the coaches. I had to be around them and, um, felt like I was at home being around them. So yeah. it started, it, that's when it started and not knowing. And then, Sorry, not knowing that I was going to be interning with the Jets during the summers, but yeah. I actually turned changed my major to become sports management, and really? that was because I think it was because of when I started with the whole Jets thing, and then yeah. realizing I wanted to do something in sports, I didn't know what it was going to be. So. Yeah, so so that's what you did in the summers. I did that three did, summers. Uh, okay, take us there. So you got in the door. So and got, how did it work? So Dad, um, you know, they were on Hofstra's campus uh, doing yeah, their training camp. The so he yeah. just. He called John Griffin, and he's, who was the director of scouting, and just said, hey, John, do you guys do internships in the summer? And John's like, yep, we do. We have you know summer interns at college, that are in college that come in and help the scouts and help me and get the prep done. And so, of course, I had nothing to do in the summers, and it was couldn't have been a better opportunity for me. And I lived in Long Island and because that was where home was anyway. Yeah. So it was the best opportunity that I ever had, especially being a college student already yeah. at that That's level. That's like a dream job it was for unbelievable. a college student. Yes. Yeah. And – you know, when you first got into this, there weren't a lot of women in this. Correct. Right. Yep. Not a lot of women. Now, you know, because of your name, they figure, oh, you know, she's a football person. Right. So, so that helps. Yes. No question. You know, but then as you start to get into it, um, what did you notice just working with the Jets? I mean, what type of responsibilities did you have? I mean, I know you were involved in helping out, you know, but right. what, what does that mean? What's in town? No, that's an awesome question because I didn't know anything about the NFL and how it worked. So mm. I'm at the Jets, I'm doing scouting interns, and I'm like, well, what other things could I do in it for an NFL team? Okay, well, you're a woman, so you could – you could be administrative assistant or you could go work in community relations or yeah. you could go work in marketing. And I'm just like, that's not, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to be a scout or a coach by any means, okay. but I, you know, I want to do something more operational. Mm -hmm. And so kind of seeing all the different facets of the NFL, I just took all my opportunities that I could at the time as an intern mm -hmm. and then parlayed it into becoming a, like a well-rounded operations support person. Yes. And then after the Jets, after you graduated from James Madison, what was the next step for you? So I knew I wanted to get a master's degree, and mm -hmm. I knew I could get it uh, paid for if I did it um, at, in campus rec. So I actually oh. went to, yeah, I got I went and got into Georgia State and Georgia Tech. I was a GA at Georgia Tech, so I worked 40 hours, oh. <laughs> 40 hours a week, which was like 90 hours a week, which yeah. is at the rec center. And they paid for my schooling, and I did two years. Um, and I thought I actually wanted to go into rec. And by the time I was done with the masters working the full time, it was a great experience. Um, I just, it was not, I knew it was not for me mm -hmm. and I did miss the athletic realm. So then that's when I went into college athletics after yes. that at Maryland. Mm -hmm. At Maryland. Yes. Okay. So who was the coach at Maryland and how did you? So Ralph Friedgen. And oh, yeah. I actually, it was a, yeah, it was a, wow. I applied blind. I didn't know anyone. And it was a, it was like an internship, a coordinator of uh, facilities and um, athletic facilities. And okay. so I just applied blind and I actually got it. And they took a chance on me because I was in, I was doing recreation facilities. And this one was for the Comcast Center and yeah. the football field. So I wasn't working with the football team. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, maybe I'll just go into college and do what I was doing in rec. Mm -hmm. Well, then that's at Maryland is where I discovered the actual position of director of football operations. Wow. And I started working with them a little bit. You know, I'd work with him a lot. And I was like, that's what I want to do. Who were some of the coaches at Maryland at the time? That was uh, the James Franklin and those guys yeah. were all there. So wow. it, was, uh, it was a big staff. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was big time. I wish I had done more with them, but, yeah. you know, I was primarily were there. Yeah. I'll tell you who I was very close with was Gary Williams and his basketball staff. Oh, Because really? their offices were right across the street or right across the hall. And yeah. I did I did everything with them. It was no kind kidding. of funny. But yeah, that's they're a pretty good group. Neat. So Maryland, then what? So then um, I actually a little plug i left maryland to go move to hawaii with my little sister <laughs> she was a uh, uh, at school at uh manoa and i was like you know what i need okay. to if i, I really want to go do this i got to do it now because yeah. if i don't you know my career is going to start i'm never going to do it so i left maryland um went to hawaii for about three three or four months and then when well, you know the day that i landed on oahu i got a phone call from eddie davis who was at um jmu yeah. i was you know he was the offensive coordinator at jmu and he said sarah I'm at Northeastern. Our administrative assistant job just opened. Would you be interested? 
And I'm like, like what? okay, <laughs> yes, college football. I, you know, I necessarily, yeah. like I said before, I didn't want to be an administrative assistant per se. Yeah. But he basically told me, look, we don't have an operations person here, so you could yeah. come That's and it. you could build it into that. And so by the time the interview process got rolling, I was out in Hawaii for those three months, got back, went to Boston, interviewed, and another place that took a big chance on me. They didn't know me. I didn't have a whole lot of real experience. Mm -hmm. And they they hired me, and I you know, pretty much learned everything from the coaches. And I took away all those operational responsibilities for my coaches so That's they right. could coach. Yeah. And I became the director of football ops until we dropped yeah. the program. Because back in those days, and there's a transition time, and – Really, administrative assistants were the football ops. Absolutely. It, it, I, at some point, it was named right. football ops. That's right. Know, and Well, and also yeah. the woman before me was a very traditional role, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. So yes. when I got there, I'm like, w w when am I leaving for the games? Let's go. They're like, why are you coming to the games? They, they were shocked <laughs> that, you know, that the administrative, quote, unquote, administrative assistant wanted to come to the games. And I think that's when they knew I was dead serious about taking yeah, this role on. Exactly. So Now, um... That's sort of bizarre because you say Northeastern and they used to be a really good football program on they the were. East Coast and then they dropped football. That was the worst experience I've ever been a part of. However, it l directly led me to where I'm sitting today in the yes. NFL because when we, we dropped that program the day after our last game in 2009. I <laughs> vowed to stay there and help my kids get out of that school and transfer to go play football. We must have had over 100 college coaches coming sure. in to look at these kids because they could transfer wherever they wanted to. Yeah. And lo and behold, the, guy, the coach that retained me at Georgia State um, is one of the coaches that came in to recruit one of my kids. And he wow. remembered me helping him try to get this kid into his school. And mm -hmm. that's why I kept my job at Georgia State. Wow. And then that's how also I met my husband because he, it was the same coach that introduced me to his brother-in-law. Oh my gosh. So it changed my life <laughs> tremendously. And I still keep in touch with a lot of the Northeastern players and mm -hmm. coaches. And when you go through something like that with a group of people, you have Ooh. the bond and it's, it's hard 10 years ago. Yeah. 10 years Can't ago. I believe it. And yeah. And it wasn't, but a, within a year or two of that, when Hofstra dropped It was the football. same year. Was but it? Hofstra kept their coaches and everybody on for three weeks. Yes, they I let remember. them go recruit. Yeah, that was a tragedy. Ooh. I mean, I to this day, I just um, I don't know. I just that was went, hard. Yeah, it's hard what yeah. those guys went through. Absolutely, those players, and it was just uh, I don't know. I guess I don't really care because I don't know anybody right. there right, right now. No. But I mean that that was um, low. Hofstra was a real powerhouse. Oh, I know that. No doubt. Yeah. It's amazing. And we still have, you know, all the coaches on my oh, yeah. current staff are Hofstra guys. Yeah, right. So a lot Falcons, of them are. Yeah, yeah a lot Raheem of and Brock guys. and Quinny and yeah. yeah all those Lance guys. Schulters. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Who played for your dad. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And that's in the NFL right. for a while. So Yeah. Wow. So, so you, you look at that. So you go to Georgia State. and um, Well, so when Northeastern dropped, I didn't start looking for jobs right away. Yeah. And then I started, and this Georgia State position came up. And when I had left there from grad school, I said, I'm never moving back to Atlanta. I hate it there. <laughs> I was, like, such an immature, like, college brat. Sure. So my yeah. SID comes into me, and he's like, Sarah, the job at Georgia State, they just started a program. There's a <clears throat> DFO job. I'm like, mm, I'm not going to. I don't want to go there. So I, I look into it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Guess who one of the athletic directors is? Is my boss from the University of Maryland. What? So I call him. I'm like, James, I'm like, what's up? Like, <clears throat> gave him the whole situation. He's like, I would, yeah, let's get you down here to interview for it. So I went down, interviewed with Coach Curry, and the place had transformed since I had been there really? last. And yeah. they were so supportive and behind this football program. And I was like, I would be lucky to get this job. Right, and it was a one double A, same conference. It was a perfect fit for it's me. Like rising for them. from the ashes. I mean, yeah, it's amazing. Right? Right? Yeah, so I was down there. Started work at the end of January, and then we moved from Division One double A to one A within three years. Whew. And at that point, there was only one other woman doing that role in a one A at a one yeah. A level. So it was kind of it was really special that I was able to do it. Now there's a lot more, but sure, yeah, yeah, you guys cool. were trailblazers yeah. in that time. So you you, you do that. And um, so you work for two coaches there, if I'm correct. Right? That's right. Bill Curry, he started the program. Yes. Coach Curry, love him. And then uh, Trent, he retired, and Trent Miles stepped in from Indiana State, yeah. and he's the one that kept me on. And okay. and it was the, tried to sneak attack me and introduced me to his brother-in-law. And oh. next thing you know, him and I are, are married now. So yeah, okay. um, yeah. And it was just uh, I don't know what the luck was that Coach Quinn ended up getting the Fal the Atlanta Falcons job. I don't know right? what kind of 
Well, he was a great defensive coordinator, oh, yeah. obviously, with the Seahawks and oh, everything. Oh, the absolute best. Yeah, well, you know, no doubt. So, I mean, you know, you got a Hofstra guy there, you know. I mean, it's almost like if you've coached at Hofstra, you're a Hofstra guy. Totally. Right? Yeah, it's like they all, you know, you, you get together Everybody at the convention. Everybody knows each other, yeah. each other. Even yeah. though you weren't there together, you probably no. somehow know each you other. You follow each other. Yes. I can remember coaching at uh, Widener, and I was up at uh, the Meadowlands. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, Kyle Flood yeah. was the uh, head coach at Rutgers. Yes. You know, and uh, I'm there with my buddy, the head coach at Widener. I was the OC over there. And, uh, you know, and then he, he goes, he wants to introduce himself to Kyle, you know. And then uh, as he's, as, I think as he's shaking his hand, then he look over, he goes, is that Manny Matsakis? You know, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle you know, it's that, like, right? that's he's crazy. Like, oh, my God. You know, yeah. Yeah. You knew and I'd never coach with him. Oh, but, you yeah, know. he was after you, right? Yeah. That's so, so funny. Just, you, we all knew each other. That's very you know? cool. Yeah, and, I, yeah. you know, the other thing going back to, like, saying it's family is – on our current staff right now, there's five of us that are Hofstra people, and I include myself in that. Yeah. And it truly feels like I'm working with family because oh, yeah. these are people I've known for over 20 years. And mm -hmm. I'll never, when we played, when I was at Georgia State, we went out and played UW. Yeah. And me and one of our coaches got in the car and drove over to see Quinny at the uh, Seahawks facility. And I remember telling him, like, Quinny, I know you're going to be a head coach one day. I want to be your assistant. Wow. And that was like in 2014. And that, or, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember what year it was, but yeah, yeah, it was way before he was became head yeah. coach, and so. And there you were. There I am. So you had the opportunity. How'd you get into the? Obviously, the connection with him, you know. But uh, how did it all transpire? Well, the initial connection um, was I was in the scout. I, they hired me to work in the scouting department because the, the position mm -hmm. had, was open. Okay. And so I was really good. It was translated well from Georgia State. I was doing a lot of like college relations, talk, you know, sending the scouts to colleges. I've been to all these colleges. I know the DFOs, and yeah. it was easy, good communication. And then after the 2015 season, um, they moved me over to be his, again, his executive assistant. Well, not my jam. L want to be his assistant, but sure. I'd like more. I'd like more of an operational role. I'd like to do more. Yes. And so he kind of like, we talked about it. He kind of like let me pick the title and all that. And we figured it out. And I've been doing so much more involved with like the team travel and the operations of, yeah. of the team. It's been, been awesome. Yes, right. Yeah. So it's been what five years? Yeah, we just yeah. finished our fifth season. Yeah. So your your role there for people that want to get into operations or just want to see what this is all about and um, what do you do? Well, this is the way I best explain my job, and you know, mm -hmm. the whole time I've been operations, I tried my best. I try my best to eliminate distractions for the players and coaches and mm. this at this juncture i'm mostly just for the coaches so sure. i take anything off their plate that they don't need to be worrying about so that they can focus on x's and o's like what so um when we're on when we're doing stuff with the families for trips mm -hmm. i'm like i'm not even going to communicate with the coaches i have a day i have a weekly email that goes out to the wives oh. so i'm communicating yeah. with the wives on all matters for away games uh travel and all that yeah. Um, cause their husband wouldn't tell them what's going no, on. No, anyway. exactly. Just <laughs> cut them out completely Yeah, and they appreciate it. So, yeah. um, I started that at Georgia state too, where I had weekly emails with the wives and they, even to this day, they say that was the best thing ever. We don't do that in any other school. So I think it's so important to get them on board. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that I, I help with. Um, I play the music at practice. Really? I've been DJing for four <laughs> seasons, and I call myself DJ Jiggy. Okay. <laughs> it is hilarious. One of the – DeMonte Casey started calling me Auntie Sarah. I'm like, Don't. It's very funny, but um, it's okay. been a really fun part, yeah. uh, part to do that. Um, do you pick the songs? I do. Really? I have a playlist now that's about 800 songs. And I play as okay, we go. I need this. Oh, yeah. I, you need and to give me clean. some of these songs. Yeah, I need that. It's, all, it's so we're good. We're just starting to do some music at our, at yes. our practices. I you like that? You the players like that? I love it. Really? I have a DJ website that I subscribe to. Here, you'll love this one, though. So I, my first season doing it, I go on the bye week. I go home to New York. Yeah. I'm in Long Beach at a, at oh, a bar, yeah. and the, there's a DJ there. Okay. So I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm a DJ, too. I start talking to the guy. <laughs> so I was like, I have a question for you. Where do you get your music? I'm looking for clean music. That, yeah, you know, he, sure. So he shows me this website. I was like, this is great. You know, you pay X amount, and it's unlimited downloads. What is it? What's the website? It, MP3 pool. Okay. online okay. it's great so it's 20 dollars a month unlimited downloads clean and dirty great perfect yeah, whatever you want yeah. so we, we talk for a little bit and he's like all right well he's like um what's your dj name and i go dj jiggy <laughs> and he goes wait like jiggy like jigantino 
And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Yes? How do you know that? He goes, oh, I played for Greg Gigantino at Hofstra. Get the he heck played out at Hofstra. of here. Yeah. Wow. And, that's there. and then I ended up going back to Long Island over a break and um, co-DJing with him at a club. Really? Oh, it was hysterical. Yeah. So I'm really into that. Okay. Yeah, so I definitely, for our, uh, people to subscribe to the podcast and listen and watch, and uh, I, I want to put that link on there on the website. Okay. Yeah, you should. Yeah, it'll be pretty neat I'll just send to it help to you because sure that because that is an issue, especially in college, because you're always looking for the good. Yes. There's a certain like beat you want and something that yep. the players like, but if they're not clean, then Correct. you know presidents and ad That's whoever right. they get media, all upset. We have yeah. our media. Yep. No, I'll so definitely share it, it with you. It I'd is a, it's it. a great resource. Okay. I tell all my college DFO friends. Then I so. just need the songs because like what I listen to is not what exactly. they listen to. That's why <laughs> every day the DJs all over the world are uploading these songs. So how am I supposed to know what the new songs are? So I don't have to worry about it. Okay. With this website. So I'll definitely share that with cool. you. Cool. That yeah. would be great with yeah. us. That, exactly. that, that's great. I appreciate it. The other that. thing I was going to add when you were asking me about just like, you know, my job and my role, it's really cool that I get to be in my role because I am a coach's kid and I yeah. totally understand these guys. Um, people who are, you know, didn't grow up in football, they mm -hmm. don't necessarily understand just, I don't know, the empathy and all the stuff that goes into it. So mm -hmm. I think it's so cool that I was brought up in that and it's such a natural fit for me to be around these guys. And yeah. tell me that some of the players are just like, man, you're like, you're just like really chill and really good. And I'm just like, because I've been around you guys since I was zero. So it yeah. comes naturally. Yeah. So it's, it's been really cool. That is awesome. My dad is like, you know, obviously my biggest mentor. So yeah, he is. And he's proud of you. I know that. And I just, I think one year I remember I, you know, I'd met you obviously when you were really young and then it was a few years later. I think I was at the, um, the year I can't remember. I, I think I think I was coaching the CFL or something, mm -hmm. and you guys came to the Senior Bowl. That's right. And we had like a little deal reception. Yes. Hey, this is Sarah. I was like, what? You know, we're yep. talking, and she said she's gonna she's in football. I said, what? This is great. And at that point, I I really, even though there were others, not very many, but you were the first one to me. Yeah. It's like that is just brilliant. Yeah. You know, yeah. to have a female That's in right. this profession. Uh, because what I've noticed is as a coach all these years, it's like it, you need that. Yes. I agree. It's I, a good I, balance. I, I, yeah. I think you need it and you're seeing it more and more at the, at the big schools, but it helps in recruiting. Yeah. Uh, you know, when parents come on the visits, yep, absolutely. you don't always have to have just the wives there. You have right. somebody, but they're a football person, Correct. which really helps. And, and it just all relates and puts it together. I've noticed that. Not to knock my coaches at places I've been, but uh, most women I know that are doing this profession are way more organized. Absolutely. Well, and they don't want <laughs> to, and you don't want to be a coach, so you want to be the operations and organized. And exactly. Yeah, that's my other. That was my other selling point. Where like, why? Why shouldn't women be able to do? Uh, oh, operations totally. it's perfect yes and and even today and you know i was gonna ask you about this there, there's a few women out there actually coaching like yes. the 49ers yep. have an assistant she was coach. with us at the falcons oh Katie really Sowers, yep. yeah and then there was one before i actually I think she wrote a book and i follow her on twitter i think at, um i can't remember her name she was one of the first one maybe the first one i remember yeah i know who you're talking about yeah yep which I thought I don't remember her name either, but I totally know who you're talking yeah, about. And then there's um, a girl with the Texans who um, I've yes. heard very good things about as well. Okay. And it's just not something that I'm interested yeah. in. I, but know, I think it's good for the profession. Yes, I agree. I think it's great. You know, it, if, it really if, makes if some sense. Like, and there's women's tackle football out there now. There's <laughs> women's flag football out there now. So there's okay. women that are going to actually get to grow up and play it and understand it like a coach would. You That's know? great. So. Because in the end, you're, you're coaching it and the great coaches are great teachers. That's exactly right. You know, so it doesn't matter you know your gender exactly. to do that i don't believe so as long as and if you're intense and you believe in it and you can sell it mm -hmm. it's great yep. you can do that yep. so the falcons okay you guys obviously you were talking about you guys have had a, a good run you had a, this season ended up on a high note right right and you look at what you're doing there and um by title it's like you are uh, coach quinn's assistant right-hand person right, sure I mean, absolutely. That, that's what that entails you know so what is your interaction with him i mean how does that how what you know on a regular basis you know how do you guys work together and so forth you know uh i mean it's all day every day i mean it's everything he's doing i know where he is i know what his next thing is so i try to just keep him on track so that when he's at something he's not worrying about what his next thing is because he keep knows a schedule for he, him yeah and he like knows that? i'm gonna come get him for everything so i'm working on that all day as i'm working on other things as you know that 
regular okay, so things take, I would do. Okay, so take me through that because I've always been intrigued. Because it's funny, like when I was at uh, the head coach at Texas State. Okay. Yep. And it was the first time I had, and anyone in the football operations, it was I had an administrative assistant. Okay. I hate to admit it, I didn't know what to do with them. I mean, oh. I was just, I'm just going to do You're everything. Self-sufficient. Yeah, yeah like, I, gotcha. I got staff meetings. You do this, you do that. Yeah. I had no clue. I was like, I don't know what to do, mm-hmm. you know? And and I don't think a lot of guys, when they become head coaches, that's not, you don't understand the power it can give you. I'm talking about power to get things done. Totally. Right? Exactly. So so take me through how can, can a coach, let's say that you're somebody out there that's coaching your first head coaching job. You have a football operations person. What do you do? It's, I, it's honestly, it's different for every coach. Like you yeah. just said, like you just don't know what to do with them. So coach Quinn has two, two of us. So mm. I handle the um, off the field stuff. And then Steve Skarnacki handles the on the field stuff. So okay. his title is assistant to the head coach and on the head coach, uh, the coordinator of head coach operations. So we really are the both. Steve does more of the um, team stuff. Okay. And on, then I'll do um, just everything like off the field pertaining to coaches. Um, but it's, there is no day like the other. Every day is different. Yeah. There are so many obligations that Quinny has that are, really? yeah, that are not with football. I mean, we we do a good job managing them, but he just gets pulled in a lot of directions, and not in a bad way. It's just when you're a head coach for of an NFL team, you've got four press conferences a week, you've got radio shows to do. So I have to weave all that in with the staff meetings and the team, all the team functions. So you keep the master, his master. Schedule. I keep his master, and then now this year we have a new uh, app that we use for the player schedules that I I help Steve with. We man, I manage that. So it's been really great because I've gotten a better idea on how to. Um, fit everything together with okay. the team stuff, Coach Quinn stuff, media, everything that he does. Okay. So, so. what is, you know, I think it was, um, I don't know, a few years ago, and it might have been in Sports Illustrated or something. I was reading an article, and it was talking about uh, John Harbaugh. And it was interesting. It had, like, his week. And they would, like, lock it in, you know, when he wakes up to when he goes to bed. And I'm looking at this schedule I'm thinking, like, okay. I mean, I've been with some guys at work crazy hours yep. and all this stuff but w- what's his schedule like uh with the falcons he, he works late um he's really good about like you know if i'm done for the day i go i, I don't have to stay until he goes home because yeah. he's you know he'll be watching film and stuff so um yeah i mean he's i've never I mean, driven in that parking lot when his car has not been there when i leave or drive in so really? he is an early okay. morning and a late night for sure but he's really good about always going home and always um, not bringing work home with him. So he, I think he tries that's, to do all the work. Yeah, he's, he, I think he values the home life and um, he's, he does a good job balancing. Does he work that. out? Yeah, we have um, a Peloton, we have two Peloton bikes, one in his office and one in Raheem's office. Really? So he has no okay. excuse. Not No, we, we do, we work out. We, yeah. we put a heavy emphasis actually on everybody working out because it's okay. just so important. Got to get, yeah. got to get up and get moving. So yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, I think that balances it out because in this, you know, in this profession, as you know, you've been around so many coaches, and they all handle stress differently. That's right. Right, and uh, working out is really—I mean, it's it's critical because I mean, you see guys, and not to knock them, because I, I've seen some guys that just don't. Right, of course. You know, I mean, Coach Friedman probably didn't work out a lot. <laughs> you know, right. And he's a fantastic <laughs> football coach. I mean, like a savant in yeah, many absolutely. ways. I mean, the guy, right? Unbelievable. You know, and uh, but I, I think in this day and age. If somebody wants to coach for a long time, right, yeah. you better take care of yourself. Exactly right. You better be in shape. You're yeah. out there throwing to the guys and running around. And right. it's fast now. The practices are a lot faster than they used to be. Oh, yeah. My husband and I talk about that a lot because he's a high school football coach. Sure. So yeah. literally, I'm when Trent was still in Georgia, I was getting out every level. So Friday, we'd go to JP's game. And then Saturday, we'd go to the Georgia State game because Trent was the head coach. And then Sunday, we'd go to my game. So the one year where I think me and my husband counted, we went to like... 67 football games in a, one season or something. <laughs> All levels, college, pro, everything. It was yeah. hysterical. But he, him and I talk about that a lot because he always make he's a big workout guy too. And just yeah. how, you know, you just got to be able to keep up and take care of yourself. Yeah. So, okay, let's, let's go back to Coach Quinn for a second, okay? Just for my own curiosity. Yeah, okay, so he works out. and So w- when does it get to the office, generally? I would what's, say what's by your, six. By six. I would say so. Okay. If I had to guess. Yeah. And then does he like to work out 
at the beginning of the day, or when, when is his like scheduled? Yeah, time? usually he'll do it in the beginning, um, or if not, he'll just go mid, like try to do a midday. Mm-hmm. So I don't, you know, when I'm, yeah. I'm not, I don't go in the gym during the day when the players are in there. So I don't, sometimes yeah. I don't even know when he when he does. Yeah. But so he does that. He's good about it. How about staff meetings and so forth on a typical day? How does he handle those things? Well, what is we, the organization? We'll of do it a morning staff meeting every day okay. during the season, and then um, is that everybody? Uh, yeah, including equipment and uh, man- Trainers, all of, yeah, everybody. video, and just to get everybody on the same page. How long does the staff meeting usually last? During the season, it's like 10 minutes. It's very quick. It's okay. a very quick start to the day. So is it just an informational deal? Hey, I'm, I'm giving you info, or there's no reports or anything, is there? Yeah, I would say it's more of like, yeah, info. info like, here's a practice everybody. plan today. Here's what we're adjusting and adding mm-hmm. time to walk through and stuff okay. and all that. So, all right. Does he have any uh, – obviously, as a head coach – you know, the product in the end is his, you know, but it's where is he more involved? Um, well, the, it was an interesting year this year because he started out, he was calling the defense. So okay. it was a it was definitely um, it, it was different because of that, because in mm-hmm. the past he was just involved with some of the defensive planning. And now this past year for the beginning, he was doing he was the coordinator. So then once that uh, changed over, we kind of shuffled people around, move Raheem back over to D. Um it freed him up a little bit more. He wasn't as in as, as many defensive yes. meetings, but uh, I, I know when the players are meeting, he's always in. He's always meeting with the players. Like really? when the D line is meeting, he's in there. Really? Without. Oh yeah. Is that his expertise? Yeah. D line. D line. Yep. Okay. So he pass as rush. a head coach, pass rush. Yeah. The pass rush specialist. Yes. I love that. Okay. So so that's as a head coach, he's in it and he's over it yep. at the same time. So he is working with a position that he is an expert in. Right. Right. And um, and he's involved in that facet of the game, mm-hmm. and um, I assume that then how do they handle the offensive side of the ball? Does he have any meetings with those guys or anything? Yeah, I think or? he sits in on those meetings. Um, off, like I don't know how often during the season, but yeah. um, Dirk Cutter runs our uh, is our offensive coordinator, so okay. I think he just you know yeah. lets them do their own thing, and for the most part, great. I'm sure, he's not in there telling <laughs> you know what plays, plays to run yeah. and all that. So yeah. yeah, I've seen some guys try to pull like Belichick. He'll try to. Oh really? Yeah, he does That's it. Funny. tries to do oh, everything, gosh. you know. But but I mean he trusts other people. Yeah. You know, he's exactly. got you have great coordinators, that's what they do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So so that that's interesting the way that works. So when um when the season is over, right? And I think a lot of people out there, like if you're in high school or in college, you know, every the the annual calendar is different at every level. Right. Exactly. I mean, I, you know, I've coached high school, college, a little bit of time up in the Canadian league and it, it's every place was different. Just oh, gosh, the levels yeah. are different. Right. right. So, you know, when, um, well, my, first season, of all, my, yeah. fa- my favorite question people ask me and the coaches. So do you guys like, do you still work at the Falcons during the spring? <laughs> they literally think we only work during the season. Yeah. But our, so yeah, so our, a typical, like right now we're going through a little time off and then we'll do, we, but we're also doing senior bowl and all that. That's right. And then we have the combine coming up. So the majority of Are this time. Are you guys time, coaching the senior bowl this year? No, we're not. Uh, okay. No. But you're just prepping for what's Prepping all my, happen. a lot of my coaches will go just yeah. to watch the practices, oh, yeah. which is great. So yeah, our, our, right now we're literally prepping for all the college stuff so okay. video on all the guys that we like and then free agency and then once that you know that's all we're doing until the draft starts uh, and then while our okay. off-season program will also start the, uh, the week before the draft so the guys will be in doing their workouts and stuff all together and then we'll have the draft and then before you know it it's rookie mini camp and then vet mini camp and we're practicing it's, it's great otas and that's that's it's our great. favorite part i mean it's just <laughs> back to football like when the players come back you know how it is yeah. and they're gone for for so long and oh yeah it's exciting yeah so without a doubt it's very cyclical like you said and it's just yeah. every place is different but we what are it. the vacations for nfl coaches i would say around this time now usually they'll take a little break take a little break and then um around uh the owners meetings they'll usually Around that time, which is in March, March. The end of March, okay. and then do they get a little combat. bit right before training camp too? Yeah, we get a chunk off in the summer, which yeah. is great, and that's the other thing that I've been very fortunate where he has because I do work a lot of hours, and yeah. I am allowed to you know take off for those weeks in the summer that the coaches get off. So it's been it's oh, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's you need good. it though. We work seven days a week for yeah. six months straight. People don't get that. No, it is intense. Like this year, I traveled to all the games, and it was literally yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. No, no days <laughs> off, but it was fine, you know. Yeah. Because I love it. It's just it doesn't feel like work when you love your job and no. you love your boss. So yeah. Very lucky. No, there's, there's no. I, I literally can't say enough about how an awesome human being Dan Quinn is. Yeah. He's to everybody, players, coaches, everyone in the building, just everyone, top to bottom. Really. That w- treats everybody. W- what are like his gold. his uh, best traits? You think as a leader? 
he's probably the most genuine person um, I've ever been around. He's mm -hmm. just, uh, he's always giving people compliments and just trying to build people up. And that's mm. his biggest, I think his, his best attribute for sure. Does he really know the guys playing for him? Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, he tries. He, I mean, yeah, he, yeah, absolutely. He's really, really good with connect, making good. connections and keeping. Connection. Yeah. 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 I mean, that, that's interesting. He's very interested in yeah what they're doing outside. I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. My second year with him, he said, do you think this would be possible? Can we get every single player, coach, uh, wife, and kids' birthdays on my calendar? And I was like, is this guy nuts? There's <laughs> no way. So we, I did it. Yeah. I did it. We send flowers and gifts every yeah. birthday to every single wow. player, every single coach, wife, and child. That's, he doesn't care. He, yeah. And out of his own pocket. Really? Yeah. That's, how, that's just the little things that he... When he wants to connect with people, that's something that he can do to sure. just say, "Here's from you're from your Falcons family." Wow. Yeah. You know, it, you, you talk about a family atmosphere, and you you like you talked before. You alluded to how you um, have been able to connect the wives to the game, right. you know, and what their husbands are doing because yep. it's you know it's. You know, oftentimes these guys are up before everybody right. gets up and then they come back and yep. the kids are in bed already. So they, yep. they're dealing with that, you know, and it's like, how do you um, how do you do that? I mean, to keep the wives really informed. What is. Yeah, your... that's a great question. Um, and this is something that I've been involving with since Georgia State, because sure. when I did it there, I saw how well it worked. So the first thing off the bat, if we hire a new coach, I ask him for his wife's wife's cell phone number. OK. And I call her personally and I'm like, hey. I wanted you to, I wanted to welcome you to the family. Here's my name. Here's my job. Here's what I can do. I can answer any questions. I've been in Atlanta 10 years now. I can help you with some stuff. I mean, you know, I don't have kids, so I can't help you with finding your kids at school, but I can help you with anything you need help with. If you have a question, just text me. I'm always here for you. So I start that off. I'll do an email introduction for the new wife and all the current wives. And, um, and then during the season, they'll get a, a weekly email from me just saying, like, what can I get for you as far as like, pregame passes, tickets, and all that stuff to the games, mm -hmm. and let me know who's coming, hotel rooms. And it's a constant stream of communication, and they know they can call me, text me anytime they need to. And then that way, they're not bothering their husbands at work, and they feel like they're in the know, and yeah. it's so important. Yeah, because I know as a coach, it's just so difficult because you're, you're, you're immersed in what you're doing, and a lot of people have no... I mean, in the outside world. Oh, they have no concept. Yeah, they, they don't know what you're locked into. And, and even, and it's not like it's a constant, I'm just watching film all day. Oh. And sometimes you got to get away from it. So when you recharge to watch it again, you can actually absorb sure. the material better, you know? And then, then you get a call from home, you know? And it's like, you want, I mean, I'm just telling you, I'm sure you've dealt with it in your, you know, as a daughter, you know? Right. And it, it's hard because, you know, you get a call at the office and they want to talk about things that are going on at home. Right, 100%. And you're, you're empathetic, but as a coach, most coaches just, I hate to admit it, don't know how to deal right. with that. We suck at the it. balance. Yeah, I've we really do. At least once a season, I'll get a text from a wife. Hey, Sarah, have you seen my husband today? Is he alive? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, they nah. haven't talked to them in like 48 hours. Haven't talked to them yeah. or seen them. Sometimes I'm like, they Come sleep on, you guys. There. I've I know. seen guys sleep there. I... I'm like, you want me to go knock them upside the head? Yeah. <laughs> Text your wife back. <laughs> yeah. I not, know. not often, but it's, it's it's funny when that does happen. But they, you're right. You get you uh, get locked in. The and stories you just... get. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the Falcon. Every every place is a little different, but it's it's interesting. Like I when I was uh, at um, Widener University, which is just outside of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. right? And uh, a couple of our coaches on the staff had coached for Andy Reid. Okay. You know, sure. I had our, we had a, Philly. yeah, we had a, um, our head coach was, was on the staff there with, with the Eagles. And then, um, our defensive coordinator at the time, who's now the, I think he's a linebacker coach at Chicago bears. And, um, he, he was, he had been with Andy's staff coaching linebackers. Right. Mm -hmm. And there were stories of just sleeping in the office. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and you know, that is just how coach Reed right. is. That's oh, yeah. just, you know, and he's successful. Totally get it, but there's so many different ways to be successful. Absolutely, I don't know that you have to do that uh, at that level, right? But but you, you do get those notorious grinders of um, oh shoot, I was you know crazy story. So I was drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles, right? Mm -hmm. So great. Dick Vermeil had just wrapped up his coaching career. We had a new coach, Marion Campbell, and the stories of Dick Vermeil with the Eagles were like, Oh, okay. I'm getting all my guys, you know, they got beds in the walls that oh come my out gosh. and you know, and at home you need, there was some research like you sleep 
you know, if you're in a certain kind of a bed, it was like a water bed or something, you know, it's like, oh, okay, you only need six hours instead of oh eight gosh, hours. So stop. he's like, I'm buying them all so I can come in the office two hours early. Oh, that is so funny. That's that, intense. That's the mentality some of these guys oh, have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's intense. It is. It I, is I, I hope, though, like a lot of the coaches I've worked for, Rocky Hager, Trent, Bill Curry, all of them are very um, understanding when it comes to family stuff. Like, if a guy has to do something with the family, yeah. you know, if they're like, just anything. They'll let them go do it without. There's sure. no, I hope it's, it's getting changed. better. It's changed. It's I hope. totally yeah, changed. The grinding yeah. mentality is still there, but yeah. very more, much more understanding. Yeah. You have to get things done. There's yeah. no question. And if but... you have a happy, like they say, the happy wife, happy life, it's true. Yeah. So you need <laughs> to be able to spend time with your kids. Yeah. And, and that's so important. I mean, I, you know, you, I know so many coaches and that, you know, they never saw their kids and then they're adults. Right. You know, it just happens and mm -hmm. it's hard, you know, so, so in the operations world, you get a chance and I like how you put it, you know, to eliminate distractions. Yep. Number you know, one goal. Yeah. That's sort of neat because I, somewhere along the way, uh, I, I heard a head football coach say his job was to eliminate distractions for his assistant coaches. Oh man, that's. You know, he, yeah, that, that's, that's what he felt because what it was is, oh, in college at least, it was like, okay, you've got the AD wants something, the president wants right. something, so keep, no doubt. keep Parents. these guys insulated so they don't need to be dealing with this That's stuff. true. That's a good point. You know, and he's kind of like the head of the face of the program in that regard. And, and that's, that's how point. that works. Yep. Yeah. So, um, you know, can you see yourself doing this for a long time? I, I do. I really like it. And... Um, I think because I have in such a good position with my husband that he's so understanding yeah. because he gets it because well, he's yeah. in it and his family is also in it. Okay. Um, you know, his brother is the assistant GM, GM of the Jets. No. His other okay. brother's here at the convention. He co his brother-in-law coaches for Tulsa. So we have a lot of it, a lot of them in the family yeah. and it, it helps that he's there. And we, because we don't have kids, I, it's a career that I can continue with. If, yeah. I, if I had kids, there's no way I could yeah. at this level. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't. It'd be interesting to see if I would ever go back to college doing DFO yeah, that stuff. Was my next maybe, question. yeah, it's maybe. Like, is that I would maybe? I you know, I always said like I would love to maybe go back to JMU one day and go back to that level. I what love one double A. Yeah, yeah. One one double A is a great level, and I still think that it's um, it's more of that pure. You know, there's no bowl games, so it's kind of like just pure it's playoffs, different. and yeah, yeah. so and it's a good caliber of kid, and I, I could see myself maybe trying that one day but yeah. for now i will definitely yeah i'm gonna stick with coach quinn as long as i can honestly yeah. he's, he's just been they've been so awesome to work for so oh no question I, I can see i'm so fired up for the you guys as you transition into the next season and uh, yes you know i know you, you got good players good, great coaches good people good people you know and but you know as we started this off i mean and and it's it's a it's a different game, the National Football League. Yes, it is. I mean, it is a high stakes game. That's right. Yeah, um, everybody every week is fighting for their Literally, job. Literally, and we showed that to to San Francisco this year. I mean, right? Did anyone in the entire world think we were going to beat them? Nope, and we did. Yeah. So it's it, any it given is. Sunday. It's yeah, <laughs> just like the movie. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it is, and it's it's like I, you know, college isn't that. And although it's in some like in the SEC, some of the Power right. Five schools, they 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 do that, and and they have, um, which is interesting. Like some of these Power Five schools, especially the SEC, will have like three operations guys. Oh, no doubt. I was just sitting in the meetings, and there are multiple operations yeah. people for each school. And that was the other thing. When I was at Georgia State, we had no hardly any resources, so I was by myself. Yes. I was lucky to kind of offload some of the recruiting stuff, but it was hard. Like, I didn't even have a GA to help me. Wow. So it was – when I got to the Falcons, I was like, whoa, there's so many pe people here doing so many things. It's nuts. Yeah. Like, it was like the DFO job, like, dispersed among 10 people. Yes. At the Falcons. There's I was so like, much to it. Yes, exactly. It's yeah. at a higher level, but, yeah, it's incredible. And, and there should be multiple operations people, no doubt. Yeah. So there, there's gotta, so much to there's it. There's so it's, much to it. Yeah. And, and, and really, by, by eliminating distractions for the coaches, you're improving the product on Sundays. Absolutely. And that's, yep. that's ultimately what we all want is the best product, yep. you know, on the field. But, uh, you know, Sarah, I really – I'm just so fortunate we connected again. Very and, cool. You know, yeah. And got and to, like, actually hang out. Like, yes. we didn't, you know, usually it's just a hi and yeah. good to see you. But Exactly. Yeah, this was awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. and um, Thank you for having me. Yeah. And, you know, for everybody out there, it's like um, – we, we talk about this, that uh, I, I want to help 
and, and my mission is to help coaches win on the field and optimize their life. That's cool. You know, so yeah. it's not just about, you know, you, you, no one's happy unless they're winning, right. but you can be winning and burning it down. That's correct. And have nothing in the That's end. That's correct. So it's, um, you know, part of the things are, you know, in, in an interview segment like this, I transition. And when I come back, I'm going to, you know, I have a tips and reminders uh, session, <laughs> give you a, hey, here's some things you can do for your, you know, it could be anything, health, uh, you know, uh, organizational skills, things yep. like that, that can help coaches out there when they want to improve because uh, I think if we're constantly improving uh, we can do this for a long time and and really enjoy the greatest profession in the world very cool it's people like you that are you know moving it forward so yeah it's fun love it love it but uh, I'll be right back with your tips and reminders all right so that was a fabulous interview with Sarah and now I want to as we normally do I want to give you some tips and reminders um, that um, some an item that I use um, quite a bit, and uh, it was one of the first things I found that, uh, from essential oil standpoint, that it worked pretty much immediately for me, and it's called Digest Zen. Uh, and this is an essential oil blend, and what it does, one, it smells fantastic. Uh, reminds me, it's got some like um, I don't know if anybody ever drank ouzo. It's got like an anisette. Uh, licorice uh, smell to it. And what it is, it's a digestive blend. And it works like this. You can, um, what I often do is I can get a a glass of uh, ice um, and then I'll put like two drops, one or two drops of Digest Zen on it. And then I I put in my favorite uh, mineral water in there. And uh, so it spritzes up a little bit and then I drink it and it goes down. And if I have indigestion, completely eliminates it. I'm talking like fast. For years, I mean, for a couple decades, I was taking Pepsid and and different types of uh, these just things that would help you settle your stomach, you know, because um, sometimes maybe if you were drinking red wine, it would affect you. Or if you were, um, you know, just had too much to eat or the wrong combination of foods. So I, I would just drink this afterwards and I stopped a... I don't want to say an addiction or a long time usage of, of, uh, of, of Pepsi at AC. So, I mean, by, by doing that, it worked great. The other thing that is interesting about this is you can also take it, put a few drops right there in your hand. And then from there, you can just rub it and then put it literally on over your abdomen, over your stomach, and it goes in through your skin as well. So it's like you can drink this and you can have it come in through your skin. So I think that is um, a fantastic, if you've got indigestion, any issues with eating and you want your digestion to improve, uh, Digest Zen, which is also there. And like all these essential oils, um, there is an essential oil page that gives you some insight on how these things work because people are asking about them. So uh, go to the link on essential oils, and and you'll learn a little bit more from there. I want to thank you for joining me on the Manny Matt Sackis Show. If you are listening to this podcast, make sure to subscribe in iTunes, give us a rating, comment on the show. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel. What you'll notice is there's a little bell so you can hit the notifications when we release the next show and you get it sometimes even before it goes up anywhere else. If you'd like to get all kinds of updates, go to our website at mannymatsackis.com where you will be up to date on Monday's release of the podcast, Wednesday, a blog post or inside access feature, Friday, a video release of this Manny Matt Sackis show. Subscribe with your email and along with your getting these regular alerts, you'll receive my free report, Fill the Stadium a coach's secret formula to build a program and fill your stadium to capacity. Thank you very much.